So we're, we're so excited that we get to have Zach Garrett today with us. This is get more customer reviews and stand out above your competition. And Zach Garrett is with Five Star Business. So I've been sharing that for a couple of weeks. We met him a couple of weeks ago. Um, I asked him for an introduction and he um, basically said he has a background in marketing technology and digital transformation. And he's the owner of a fast growing Indianapolis based company that's taking a unique approach to helping companies strengthen their reputation and drive more online reviews. Over the last 18 months, we've, he's become um, the trusted partner of more than 350 businesses across North America and serves some of the major brands in the greater Indy area. And I would just say, I sent out an email that he had sent. There were a number of clients or companies that they're working with that hopefully he'll share some of the, I'm sure you will, won't you? <laughs> um, so it's very impressive. And we were able in our North side group to actually get to um, hear from Zach. And we just, uh, we all kind of just said, we got to get him for that for everybody. So I am going to share my screen, which I would as assume you're going to need that, right? Yeah. For, can I share my screen? Yeah, I'll make it. I'll make it so you can when you're ready. And I'm just going to turn it over to Zach Garrett with Five Star Business. Thank you for being here. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank for having me. I appreciate it. I'll uh, I'll share my screen here and just kind of walk through um, some slides to facilitate the discussion. So what I thought would be helpful is to give you guys some educational content. I'll, I'll walk through our solution, but I don't want this to be a sales pitch for what we do. Uh, I more want to give you some education based on our world and how I think regardless of what business you're in, uh, your reputation matters a ton. And so why our business exists and what Jennifer uh, referenced is um, what we saw is a trend of people's buying behaviors, consumer buying behaviors, uh, just like yours and mine, is very geared towards looking for what I'll call social proof or reviews in today's world. And so when you travel, you look at TripAdvisor. When you're on the road and you're in a new place, you're looking at Yelp for which restaurants to go to. And the same thing happens when you're shopping online. You look at Amazon reviews before you buy something on Amazon. And so in every part of our buying experience, things have really changed. Even in the last two or three years, I think things have really changed as this has become part of how we make buying decisions. And it not only affects our B2C kind of experiences yep. through life, but it matters in B2B too, or when you're going to uh, buy a house. Don't make for me cry again. Uh, just, a, just a second, Zach. Somebody please mute. Um, let me see. Please mute if you're not muted. Sorry about that, Zach. Go ahead. No, you're good. So, um, so regardless of your situation, you know what kind of business you're in, um, you need to have a strong reputation. If you're a realtor, your reputation is probably the only way you can stand out in your market besides word of mouth. If you run a nonprofit and you're looking for more uh, donors or more um, people to get involved, then you want more people to give you a positive review online and build a reputation. And it's just part of our buying experience. And so what our company is built to do is we are taking a unique approach to helping companies build a really strong reputation so that they can stand out in their market. And just to kind of walk through a couple um, reasons, kind of why this is so important and some stats behind why it's important. Um, you know, I mentioned that people look at reviews. I think sometimes people are surprised at how many people look at reviews. And when people buy from a local business, 97% of consumers say that they look at reviews before they buy. And 84% of those people trust those reviews as much as a family or friend. So whatever's said about your brand online, matters a ton. People trust it just as if their mom or their friend or their uh, coworker told them about your business and told them that it was true. And often what we see is that brands and businesses uh, or individuals are vastly underrepresented online. You know, they do a really good job in their business or their nonprofit or their, uh, their venture in real estate, but not a lot of their customers actually review them. And so for potential customers, you don't know how good they are. And we're really helping solve that gap. And that's honestly, for me, one of the most rewarding pieces is we've just met hundreds of business owners that do a good job. They care about what they're doing. But at the end of the day, people don't know that. And if we can help kind of tell that story and, and you deserve to be uh, recognized for the hard work that you do. And so it's super important that you do it. And just to give you some scale about in your organization, 
how often you're probably being looked at online. I'll use an example from my personal life. So like everyone last year, we did a home project because we were stuck at home during the pandemic. And we put in a patio and hired a concrete company here in Indy. I'm based in Indy to do that. And they did the project, did a great job. And I left them a review because I'm in this space. I know how important it is. And just 10 months later, this uh, picture is what Google has sent me just as a consumer and said, hey, Zach, thank you for leaving this company a review. Your review has been read 500 times on Google since you left it. And even though I work in this space, I was blown away by that. Because if you do the math on that, that is like two times a day, essentially, that someone is on Google looking and reading my review about this company. And we've worked with these guys now. We've helped them get a lot more reviews. But the magnitude of it, even sharing with them, they were shocked. They never realized that every single day when they wake up, people are looking at their brand online and deciding whether to call or whether to move forward with that company. And so it's really important to know just how common it is for people to be looking at your reviews and looking for your reputation online. And, you know, to show you some other, share some other stats that um, maybe uh, help you think through this. One of the biggest hesitations we see from business owners is they're really scared to do this because they don't know if everything's going to be positive. And so we always have to break down this barrier of, you know, you don't have to be perfect. I think there's actually a really good argument for you to not look perfect online. I think if you look perfect, it looks fake. Uh, you know, if you have 500 five-star reviews and everybody says you're the most amazing person in the world, whatever, then, you know, that's probably not authentic, right? Um, but the goal is to be above a four-star. So our, our recommendation, whether you work with us or not, our kind of uh, metric is to say you should be above a four star. So meaning the average person rates you at least four or higher. And honestly, if you run a good business and you're proud of the shirt you put on every day and what you do, you should be there um, as a business. And if you do that, just get as many as you can. Like it just doesn't matter. Just get as many reviews as you can, get them consistently, and that will produce the most value. And another thing to think about the businesses often don't realize, or uh, you know, I think this applies in the nonprofit world as well, is when people see your online reviews and that they're positive, they're willing to pay up to 30% more for those for your product or service because you're perceived to have a much higher value in the marketplace. So we work with here in Indy, some premium brands, California Closets, Serta Pro Painters, um, Aco Home Renovation, some pretty high-end uh, groups that are using their reviews to, in their sales process to say, hey, you know, we might be 30, 40, 50% more than the competition, but look at our reviews. We have five customers this month that have loved what we've done for them. And don't you want their experience? Because if you go with XYZ, you might not have that great experience. You might regret this at the end of the project. And we're finding that that is incredibly powerful. So if you're in a, a space that you are trying to uh, compete on value and, pro and experience and those kinds of things, having a great reputation makes you stand out in the market as a whole. And right from the beginning, you are perceived as the person they want to talk to. Um, I think in the, in the space where you're an individual, right? An insurance agent, a, a realtor, it's the same thing, right? If you have 10 times the reviews of other people they're seeing, they want to talk to you and they want to, they want to potentially work with you. And it's just like we do in our personal experience. And so, I won't go through all of these stats, uh, just more about how important Google and Facebook are to your business. But I use this slide to just make the point that when you're an individual or a business owner or, or involved in a nonprofit, what you need to look at your pages, like your Google My Business page or Facebook property as your most valuable assets. So you have, you know, equipment, websites, all kinds of things. You, these properties should be your number one organic lead bet. Long-term, this should be the reason your business grew 10X from where it is today. Because when people search and they look, you want to show up at the top and you want to be consistently chosen. And I always use the analogy of a uh, retirement investing as an example to where when retirement investing, you know, the goal is to save a little bit every month over time. And over time that compounds and grows and you end up with much more than you ever put in. It's kind of a snowball effect. It just keeps growing. This works the exact same way. If you turn this engine on and you consistently get good feedback, what's going to happen is you're going to go up in Google search rankings. More customers are going to choose you. And at the end of the day, 
then you're going to have more customers. And those customers are also going to leave you reviews. And so it just keeps growing, growing, growing until you really stand out and separate yourself from the competition. And I'll, I'll walk you through a couple of examples of how that's practically worked um, for some of the businesses that we work with um, here. So, you know, the challenge is we don't talk to, uh, out of the hundreds of conversations I've had with business owners, I have never talked to one who said, I don't think it's important. <laughs> I think everybody knows it's important. How important it is, is a question depending on your industry. But really the ultimate question is, how do I do it well? Because it is time consuming. You know, the idea of me trying to do this and get people to do it, you know, I've seen people try everything. The place we take our cars has little uh, business cards, right? When you check out, right? That you're supposed to take that and I don't know, like type it in and then go find them. I don't know what you're supposed to do. They, they don't have any. So it's clearly not working very well, but you know, people have QR codes. They have all kinds of these different tactics that they've tried to get reviews. And many have just kind of given up and saying, I don't know. I don't know how to do it well. We, we just must not be big enough to succeed in this. And it's just very time consuming. And in today's world, uh, what we're seeing a lot of is with labor shortages and people struggling to actually be able to have the resources to do what they need to do in their day job, this has fallen off the bandwagon. You know, they're definitely not doing this stuff because they have enough trouble just getting the stuff that they need to get done every day, uh, getting it done. And so what our kind of secret sauce and recipe for success is, um, we don't believe that the key to success is just selling you a really expensive software package where you have to figure it out, set it up, optimize it, run it, and you know, hope you do all of those things. We actually think a lot of the reason businesses fail at this is because they don't have the resources and the expertise internally to execute it, or they don't have the time to kind of test it and figure it all out, um, which takes an enormous amount of time. What we think you should do is people should focus on their day job and doing that really well, and then we'll help them get great reviews. And so our kind of formula for success is we make everything super simple for the business if we give you the best technology, we set it up for you, we run it all, we do everything from a, a strategy perspective to make it work. All you have to do is give us your customers. And then we also make it really easy for the customer with some uh, proprietary tool called Auto Detect uh, that I'll show you that makes it super easy for the customer. And so when you make it really easy for the business to do this and you use all of our, our expertise to do it, Plus you make it easy for the customer, that's gonna to lead to more reviews. And when you get reviews, that leads to more leads and revenue and ultimately a higher value of your organization as a whole. And so let me walk through and just explain kind of our solution and how we tackle this and some of the framework you should be thinking about when you think of building a really strong online reputation. So in order to build an online reputation, you really need three things. You need a vehicle or an engine to consistently help you generate more reviews. And so I'll walk you through how we do that. So you need to do this consistently. The biggest thing is consistency. You know, Google actually cares, um, you know, say that you're a realtor, for example. Google cares a lot more that you have one a month or one every two weeks than they do that you have 100. So it's, it's about how often you're getting them and how new the content is. Think of it from like a content perspective. It's new content that they want to see consistently. And so, you know, you may never have 5,000 like Peterman Heating and Cooling here in Indianapolis has because they're, you know, running a $50 million company. But if you consistently get them, you can still rank in your area. And so it's about consistently. So how do you get them consistently uh, over time? How do you have a place to kind of manage and monitor and track everything? And if, if your online reputation is important, you should really have a tool to manage and monitor everything appropriately. And then third, how do you automatically promote those reviews when you get them on your social channels and on your website to help further build your brand without it being a huge time suck for you as, as an individual? So these are kind of our um, pillars of, of what we do. Um, and so I'll walk through kind of our... Um, our different kind of process here. Let me just hide this. Uh, give me one second. Okay, there we go. Um, so our process and how our solution kind of works is our step one is that you, every customer that we work with has their own spreadsheet. And so I'm gonna walk you through an example of Serta Pro Painters of Indianapolis. Um, they're one of our customers. And what every customer has a spreadsheet. And when they have new customers, this could be weekly. Some customers do it monthly. You just come in and you put the name of your customer on the spreadsheet. Now you can do this right away if you want. You know, most people are doing it bi-weekly or monthly just from a, a logistical perspective, but you're just putting your, the name of your customers on this spreadsheet. 
And then what we're doing is at the optimal time in the week, we are taking that and we are sending your customer a personalized message from you asking you to leave a public review. Now, here's a few ways that this is different than you just sending an email to them. Number one is the messaging that we're using is working. So we're monitoring our hundreds of accounts, trying to optimize the message, make sure that what we're using is converting and driving value. So you get the, tr the faith that what you were saying is going to maximize your results. You can see here that we're playing on the, this is an older example, but we're playing on the pandemic during this and saying we're humbled by people supporting our local community and business during this challenging time. That is something, you know, this momentum around small business was a huge deal uh, for a long time. And so we played on that for a while. Now we've kind of switched to more of a growth mode, but we're using messaging that works. So you don't have to figure that out on your own. Um, and, and sometimes it's industry specific, you know, to make it work. Secondly, it's automatically emailing and texting your customer to drive the best results. And so 40% of all of our conversions come in through texting. And so if you're just sending emails or using a tool to send emails, um, you're missing out on a huge chunk of people doing it. Um, the other thing that's really different, and this is something that is just impossible to manage without um, a tool or solution, is that our tool will send reminders to your customers if they don't act. And so this is a big... Um, a big deal for trying to maximize your conversions is you wanting to send reminders and just follow up with people a couple of times. 30 to 35% of all the conversions come in through reminders. And so we even uh, talked to some big companies. I was talking to one yesterday who does a great job in this space. They're not doing reminders. So huge mistake. You have to have a tool to do it. It's impossible to kind of do on your own and, and manage that process. So you want to have great messaging, you want it personalized from you, you want to do the reminders, um, and you want to do email and texting. And then lastly, what makes it easy for the customer is when you click this link, um, what you're going to see it do is we have a feature called auto detect, and it goes to a page for just a second where you can see we've connected all of the properties that they care about. But what you saw it do, and I'll click it again, is it's going to this page and then it's automatically detecting what I'm logged into on this computer and taking me right there, popping up the box with the stars in, in the comments so that you can just leave your review. And so a lot of companies will take you through, or even uh, technologies will take you through a flow where you have to give a thumbs up, thumbs down, then you have to choose your platform, then you have to log in and all of these steps that really prevent people from doing it. And so that's why we say, you know, look, we make it really simple for you. You just give us your customers. We know the recipe for success. And we have the technology to do it. And then we're going to make it really easy for your customer because all they have to do is click one link on their phone or their computer, and it's going to automatically take them to a place where they can just choose their rating and hit post. And when you do those th two things together, it works. Um, and I'll walk you through some of the examples of that. Um, and so that is, you know, kind of in our pillars uh, from a, a, a platform perspective, that is really the get more reviews feature of our tool. Now, secondly, we have a, our, our platform allows you to monitor and manage everything. So you're going to get a lot of reviews when you do this and when you put this process in place. So now you need a place to manage those. And so all of our customers have a login uh, where they can log in and they can see all of their recent reviews. You can see some of these are, are very recent. They can see what people said. They can respond to them directly from in here. So you don't have to go to Google and Facebook and all these other places. You can just respond directly from in here. And you can also track your reporting. And so this is a, a different company uh, that we work with here in Indianapolis um, called Bin Scrub. And they can come in, they can see all of their reviews. They can pick a time frame. we said from the beginning of this year. So from the beginning of this year, um, as an example, through June, you know, they had 20 reviews from January to June. Uh, and from June now through August, they've gone from 20 to 102 reviews. So we started working with them right here at the end of June, and they have 5X'd their reviews uh, all time in the last two months uh, from working with us and just turning on this process and, uh, and making it easy. And so their owner uh, can come in here, look at this, they can track all their reporting, see where the reviews are posted. They're posted on Google or posted on Facebook. Um, and you can see kind of what people are saying. Obviously, theirs have been, you know, extremely positive reviews. And so you can track all of your analytics and pay attention to all of that. 
Um, and so this is a good example of how you can track and monitor all of your reporting. Um, and this is, uh, you know, not meant to be a plug for, uh, for bin scrub, but uh, what they do, they're an awesome company. They come to your house and clean your trash cans. Um, so if you uh, ever want your trash cans cleaned or they do some people on like a quarterly uh, schedule, um, they have, they like clean them perfectly and they just come on your trash day and put it in and then it's just clean you get home from work. Um, so it's a pretty cool company. It's kind of a newer model. Um, and, uh, they are just blowing up in, uh, in Indy. This is a good example of a customer. Um, so the idea here is, you know, you want a place to monitor and track everything. And then third, you want a place to promote your reviews. So how do you promote your reviews effectively once you get your reviews? So our tool does it in two ways. The first thing that we do is we automatically put them on your Facebook feed. So this customer here, you can see that they've got all kinds of content that they're posting about different things. But you can see here, this post is actually coming from our system. So in an automated fashion, our system is pulling in their full review. And then it's also automatically making a card right here or a graphic that our AI technology grabs what it thinks is the most important quote and sticks it in here. And so you just have really nice content that's automatically posted to your page whenever you get a new review. And what the reason why we do this is because we saw a lot of people, when they get a great review, they want to share it on social, they want to share it on their Instagram and their Facebook and whatever. But a lot of times, you know, you have to take the quote and then you have to either overlay it on an image yourself or pay a freelancer to do it. And it's probably an hour all in, you know, to, to actually get a graphic posted of work for somebody. And so we're like, why don't we just automate that and get it up there so that it's just part of the automated process. And so the first thing we believe is that, you know, get great reviews, have a place to monitor and track all everything, and then promote the heck out of the good ones. And so it's only going to share your positive reviews, post them on social, say, hey, look at this great review I've gotten. And then, of course, you also want to pull them into your website as well. So we've got um, we've got on our website, as an example, just a full stream of reviews uh, from business owners of their uh, thoughts on our service. We have customers that pull them in in more of a uh, card view like this. Um, this is one of our Indianapolis based companies that got really fancy with it right here where they're doing uh, different kind of uh, uh, fancier cards. But the idea is, is that you wanna consistently pull in recent reviews and not just have static reviews on your site. You know, if, if you take down, you know, one thing from this, uh, check your website and see if you have static reviews. If you just have testimonials on there from 2015, that's not good enough, you know, in today's world. You need to have recent reviews on there. You need to be pulling in fresh content all the time. People want to see those recent customers had a good experience with you uh, and your brand. And so um, that's a good example of kind of, we say, you know, get more reviews, have a place to monitor and track everything, and then promote the heck out of the good ones on social and on your website. Um, and I'll walk you through a couple of case studies, but wanted to just share, you know, a couple other examples of Indianapolis based companies we work with. Uh, we just started working with this company, um, Superior Bath Systems uh, here in Indianapolis. Um, they had five reviews a uh, year to date. And in the last, uh, well, less than a month, they've gone from five to 27 new, re new Google reviews uh, in that time frame. Um, and I'll walk you through a couple examples of, you know, kind of what this, what this means when you turn this, this engine on, because what it's going to do for your business is when you do this, it's gonna reward it and make your business more valuable in multiple ways. So I'll kind of use an example of another customer that we have in Lexington, Kentucky, as an example of kind of how this can play out in your business and, and what impact it'll have. So like a lot of our customers, we started working with, uh, Steve is the owner of this uh, painting business in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, last year, he had 42 reviews. Um, so if you do the math on that, he was actually doing a pretty good job. You know, out of 52 weeks, he got 42 reviews. So he was actively working on this, trying to get more reviews, you know, actively engaged and working on it. And we, he joined uh, at the end of last year and we helped him go from 42 reviews last year to already up to 159. So plus a hundred and, um, you know, 115 plus already this year that he's gotten. And look at what it's kind of done for his business. So number one, almost all of the feedback has been extremely positive. And so, you know, people say, well, is all that feedback negative? No, the vast majority of content you're going to get is going to be extremely positive. And so 
you're going to have, uh, you know, in his case, he had 97% of his comments of his 117 new reviews were extremely positive. And look what it did to his Google rankings. And so Google's looking at this and Google's rewarding him in his overall search ranking. And it's also rewarding him in his Google My Business rankings. And so his traffic, the people that are seeing him are going up significantly because he's showing higher in search volumes when people search for painter in his area. And of course, what that leads to is more leads for his business. You know, he's getting more exposure. Not only is he getting more exposure and he's being shown, but by the way, now he has over 200 reviews instead of less than 100. So just like you or I, when you're looking at three painting companies and you see one of them has over 200 and the others have less than 100, which one are you going to click on and call first to get a quote? And which one are you going to read the reviews of? And so he's seen his leads, his lead volumes go up. And on a very, uh, this might be, you know, uh, more technical, I apologize, but um, at a very granular level, how Google works is everything's broken down into micro kind of areas of a city. So if you search for a restaurant in downtown Indianapolis versus in Carmel, you're going to get totally different results, right? Because you're in a different place. And so the trick for a local business is you want to show up in those top three in as wide of an area as you can really for the whole area that you serve. And so in this example, before we started working with Steve or just uh, when we started working with him, he was in a pretty good spot. You know, it, this is the city of Lexington and a lot of Lexington, when people search for his company, he was number one. The problem is he had some holes, you know, right here, he was not showing up in the top three. So he's never getting, clicked, you know, in these areas where he's not showing up right. So you can see he had some weakness in these areas where he just wasn't showing up when people searched. Well, look at him six months later. He now is number number one in the organic search in Google My Business for painter in Lexington, Kentucky. He owns this space now. And so, and it's that snowball effect that I talked about earlier, where now that he's number one, he's getting more customers, his revenues way up. And now he's got more customers to get reviews from. I think, you know, when I did this slide, he was at 200. He's over 220 reviews now on Google. And he's just continually outpacing his competition. And it's going to be impossible for any of his competition to catch him now that um, now that he's got this ball rolling and he's kind of taken over his market. And that's what we really see is that people can really take over their markets um, when they do this really effectively. And so at a very practical level, uh, you know, from a, th from a theory level, you need a great reputation. It matters for the longevity of your business. From a very tactical perspective, it will move the needle in your organic search rankings within weeks <laughs> when you turn this vehicle on and you will see a positive impact uh, in your business, uh, there's no question. And so this is one like very micro example uh, of a painting company. Um, like Jennifer mentioned, we work with some major brands, work with one franchise where we work with over 100 locations. Uh, and just last year, we were able to generate over 1,500 reviews uh, with across that franchise, increasing their total Google reviews by 80%. And uh, you know, this is a, another way to visualize it of just in quarters, how different it was and how much it changed. Um, in this example, in Q2 of last year, before we were working with anybody, collectively, they did 157 reviews uh, across 100 locations. There's basically one review a quarter. By Q4, those same franchisees were doing 1,500 reviews. And you can notice here, the average rating was still the same. So what, what this means is, is that probably like for your business, there are all these customers here that would have left your review if you had asked and you made it really easy for them. And so how do you kind of close this gap and not miss out? You know, you've already done the hard work of giving them good service. So how do you make sure that you capture the review? Um, because this should be the easy part. And these are other examples in other parts of the country in San Diego uh, where they turn this vehicle on the back half of the year and their lead volumes just went through the roof. Um, this is an example from New York, uh, where this company had two locations an hour apart. They wanted to try us in this location first before they did this location. And they turned this on and immediately within 60 days had their lead volume spike to their highest month they'd ever had. In their other location that they weren't working with us, uh, they saw no change in their, in their uh, organic uh, results. Uh, in their in their call volume. And so, you know, this was a great example for us to say, hey, this is the only thing that changed in their business was they focused on getting reviews and it had a tremendous impact in their business and what they're doing. Um, 
And so this is what the benefit that customers are seeing is of focusing on this and kind of using our solution. Um, and we, you know, we kind of pride ourselves on um, being a, a small business and local business company first. So that's really our heart is to help local businesses. Uh, and so we take a lot of pride in uh, our customer satisfaction and testimonials. Um, one example, we don't require or lock people into long-term commitments. Um, and so what, uh, you know, what is inevitable for a lot of software companies is they want you to commit to a high dollar, high you know, cost item for 12 to 24 months um, and whether you use it or not. And uh, we just don't think that's right. So we're taking an approach where uh, you only pay for when you when you use it. And as long as you want to, you're not going to lock people into anything because we want to be very pro uh, local and pro small business. And so we're doing some things on a very practical level that I think are one, just being good uh, business people, uh, but also that are really on the side of the local business. It's really helping us uh, gain a competitive advantage and win uh, in the marketplace. Uh, and like, uh, like Jennifer mentioned, uh, we have customers uh, all over the country and are growing rapidly, uh, but we do have a big footprint uh, here in the Indy area. I've worked with um, a lot of the major home service leaders. Uh, we also work with a mortgage lending company and have helped them uh, dominate the Indy market in the, the mortgage lending space, uh, work with some people in real estate, um, a staffing agency here in town that's a major player. Uh, and so there's a lot of different industries that we're working in. I'm dabbling in the healthcare space uh, as well. And so there's a lot of different applications for this as you know, every industry is finding that social proof matters and people are looking online and trying to evaluate businesses more than ever. Um, so I'll kind of pause there. I know that was a lot of information and uh, just kind of see what, um, what questions does anybody have? Nobody has a question. He's I gone. Do. Oh, good. Hold on. I got to change my view so I can see everybody. So we can see you. <laughs> I'm okay. off video. Sorry. <laughs> nice presentation, Zach. I, I love everything that you said. And I think everybody would agree that reviews are huge because not only are we business owners, but we're consumers. And we all look at the reviews on Amazon before we buy, right? I think I might be the only one that is solely network marketing here. And so I'm wondering if you have any clients that are in network marketing and how that works, because I'm not in control of my website. We do have reviews, but they're per product, not for our business. I actually was looking at my own personal website through my company to see, and, and it's stars and all and, and comments and everything, but it's on the product. How would that look? Um, network marketing is virtual, so across the United States and Canada, but have you worked with one before and what does that look like a little bit different than some of the examples that you shared? Sure. So network marketing, meaning you're out there selling a product, trying to get people to buy from you. Yes. It's like uh, direct sales Think So my company is Stella and Dot. It's accessories, jewelry, and skincare. Okay. Yep. Um, like... Avon Tupperware, you've heard of many of the traditional. Yeah, yeah, you know, got it. So I would put that in a very similar case to a realtor or an insurance agent, right? Like your business is all about building your own brand, right? You have to, if there's multiple options here in Indy, which there probably is for people to buy that product or service through, they have to only, they have to decide, do they want to buy it through you or someone else? Just like if you're a realtor or, you know, you're, you're a realtor and there's a thousand realtors in Indianapolis, how do you draw people to you and want to buy from you? So what I would do in your case, and I would do this if you're a realtor, an insurance agent, or any independent salesperson, maybe that's a better way to say it, is I would register a Google My Business page for your business. Um, it's free. Anyone can do it. Um, and you know that one gets you, gets you exposure. And then I would start driving reviews there. When you have happy customers that say, hey, one, I really like the product, which is part of it. But they also probably liked working with you, right? Is the other element of it. And um, maybe their experience, I don't know your business, but I know some of these industries where they might also start writing reviews on, hey, uh, I started selling it. Now I'm making money or, you know, whatever whatever you're trying to draw out. And then you take those to your, um, 
I don't want to speak into your events, but if you're hosting events or whatever, you're trying to draw more people into it, then, you know, it gives you a reference point to point back to those and say, hey, here's what 10 people have said about their experience with being a, you know, a, a, a purchaser of our products or a reseller of our product or whatever. Um, and whether you find those customers on Google or not, you know, I, I use an example of in my business, um, Google, my business means nothing to, to my business. You know, we have customers all over the country. Nobody is finding us through that, that vehicle, but I always use uh, our own platform to try to get my customers to leave us a Google review because when I'm in sales pitches and we're talking to customers or we're showing them on the screen, I want to show testimonials and show happy people. And the easiest way for me to get those from my customers is just to send them to my Google page. They're already logged into it probably through Gmail or Google Maps on their phone or whatever and have them just post it right there. You know, it's that easy to do um, and to allow it to go there. And so even for B2B or, or in markets where, you know, your Google page might not, uh, you may not care about the organic search rankings in a local area. Um, it still is the best way to get testimonials. And I think in anything you do, nonprofit, for-profit, you know, faith-based organizations, whatever, getting testimonials from people because of the way our buying behavior happens is huge. You know, it should be in your sales process. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. Sure. You, I don't know if you can see that, Zach, but there was a question. Um, what does the cost look like? It's from Kim with Culligan. I feel like I'm on a radio show or something. Is it per yeah. month? Is it a contract? What is it? And yeah, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as part of, um, you know, just a thank you for having me on. We always love to give um, special discounts to people that are part of networks or give us the platform to even share our, our experience uh, and our solution. So uh, our typical model is a $500 one-time setup fee and then a monthly fee, depending on your volume. And to give you a range, an individual person would be like $100 a month, or a realtor would be $100 a month, um, independent salesperson, up to $300 a month if you are um, a Certa Pro Painters and you're doing 100 jobs a month. You know, So the volume, obviously the cost per month depends on the volume of the number of customers you're asking, but it's one to $300 a month, plus that setup fee. Um, as part of our um, kind of promo with this, uh, we're willing to do two things for anybody that wants to give us a shot. Uh, number one, we will wipe out the setup fee. So free setup fee, there's a $500 value. Included in that is we will run your customers for the last year through our process to start. So part of the reason we charge a setup fee is because you already have a bunch of happy customers. So we're gonna start by running them through our process. No volume restriction on that. You can go back farther if you want, go back to the beginning of 2020. So, um, you know, kind of our setup process is we'll run those customers through, get you all set up for free. We'll eat that cost to try us. Um, and then we'll also do the first month regardless of where uh, your price point is on your volume uh, for $99. And so just to make it easy, if anybody wants to try it for everybody, 99 bucks, when you sign up, I'll actually go through, you know, we'll ask how many customers do you do? If you say we have a thousand customers a month, it's not going to be a hundred a month. It's probably going to be 300 a month, um, but you'll kind of know that going in. So um, Jennifer, that's kind of, you know, what I'd like to do for anybody that wants to give it a shot is say, Hey, for 99 bucks, try it and uh, see if we can generate some reviews uh, for, you know, our business. And then um, as far as the contract, like I mentioned, um, there's no contract. It's a monthly subscription. As long as you use our product and service, uh, you get charged. Um, but we do not make people get locked in anyth into anything. We actually uh, just don't believe in it, <laughs> to be quite frank, uh, that, you know, that that's good for you. Uh, you know, companies do that to protect themselves so they can, you know, have a balance line. This is where we guaranteed this money. Um, we have a 95% retention rate. Uh, we are not worried about it. We uh, believe in what we're doing and believe if you turn this engine on, you're never going to want to turn it off. I was going to say he's pretty smart because he already said, once you start doing it, <laughs> you know, it's probably going to it, like the retirement thing. I thought that was a good analogy. Very good. Yep. Anybody else? So how do you sign up? So how do you sign up? All right, perfect question. So <laughs> I'll uh, I'll drop the uh, I'll drop the link in the chat where um, you can sign up in kind of our while I pull this up. Um, what our um, 
process is to get started is sign up. And then what we will do is we will set up your account in the next two to three business days and send you a welcome email with all of your information. Uh, and so you will get kind of your account details and all of that. And then from there, um, you can, um, you can, you can fill out your spreadsheet. So really your homework, once you sign up is pull together your customer list of however far back you want. You know, obviously if you go back five years, you may not get a great response rate from five years ago, but you know, pull, pull your last 12 months of customers, throw them on the spreadsheet and then we'll run them through that process. So that's, um, that's, it's really that simple. We'll get everything set up. You give us your customers and we'll get you going. So I just dropped the, uh, the checkout page uh, in that uh, in the chat link if, if anybody wants to sign up and get started. Um, I'm saving that. Well, yeah, I'm saving it, but uh, I'm not very good at this. Okay, there we go. I'll save it too and I'll send it out to everybody. You do need to let, I mean, we don't want this to, I mean, if somebody is attending today, I think that's important. You know, don't do, you know, you guys. <laughs> Next, doing a pretty awesome thing here, and uh, I I just don't know how somebody wouldn't continue on if they have an opportunity to. I mean, I would have never believed it had I not seen the uh, the numbers that you shared. You know, I mean that's just unbelievable. But I guess I just don't know what's going on out there. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I think for businesses, the question is just, um, you know, if you got one more customer in a year, what would it be worth to you? You know, that's what we that's what we typically talk through with people. And for a lot of people, if they got one customer in a year, it'd be more than worth it. And what they're finding is they're getting multiple new customers a month, you know, and and they're building their brand long term. Right. It's a long term play. Um, and uh, I'll, you know, I'll kind of throw this out there as we wrap up that, you know, one of the questions we often see is like, what's good enough? You know, what if I have a hundred reviews? Is that good enough? Um, and the reality is, is that, you know, in the HVAC business, it's a good example. Like five years ago, if you had a hundred reviews, you were in good shape. You're the top HVAC company in the area. Um, now leading HVAC companies in Indianapolis have 5,000. They'll probably have close to 10,000 by the end of the year. And they're racing in that game. Now, that's their industry, right? Which is super high volume. If you're in real estate, you could probably still dominate your local area with 30, you know, or, or 40 or whatever. And so it's not about the total number, but my point is that it's just going to continue to go up. This is not going away. You can't ignore this forever. And so the sooner you jump on, the better ability you're going to have to kind of capitalize on this now and get ahead of your competition. Because the good news is most people still aren't doing this well. Yeah, um, Louisa actually has her hand up, so I, I think she has a question. Yay, good job. <laughs> well, uh, more of a comment, and that is that I'm one of those consumers that won't make a decision until I read reviews. And so, um, you know, if I'm going on a book a trip, I will go through TripAdvisor. And another comment uh, I wanted to make was that he's right about when it's too perfect or there's too many five-star, five-star reviews, then I question the place and I won't go there. <laughs> At the same time, I do take with a grain of salt some of the negative reviews, uh, yep. particularly when it comes to resorts. So just a comment. Yeah. So let me let me just speak to that as a, a value add on, on what we teach around negative reviews, because inevitably you will get one, right? Like they're, everybody deals with crazy in their business and in their market um, of people. And sometimes they're legit, sometimes they're not. So if you're thinking about when you get negative feedback, and some of you may have this situation right now, number one, always respond to the review. So, you know, just like in your example, if, you know, somebody doesn't respond, you're like, I don't know, they could have had that bad experience. But if the owner says, hey, you know, we tried to make it right. We gave you all your money back. We did all these things. You read that review and you're like, okay, well, the owner cares. Not every job goes perfect, but at least if something goes bad, I know that they care and they're going to try to make it right. So I would always respond. Um, secondly, you can reach out to Google if it is just a um, spam or malicious, you know, intent. <clears throat> Um, you can reach out. Now, Google doesn't have to do anything about taking it down, uh, but sometimes they will. So you can do both of those things. Um, and then the third thing, which works more than you think it would, is um, just actually calling the customer. Uh, and maybe you do this first if you actually work with them personally and just trying to make it right and then asking them to take it down, saying, hey, this crushes my business. Would you take it down if, if I 
give your money back or make it right or send the team out again to fix it or whatever. And I think businesses are really surprised how often people, one, they understand the harm they're causing. And two, if you make it right, they're often like, okay, I'll take it down. Um, and that is good for your business. So um, yeah, just throw that out there as a few things you can do if you have that experience where you have a negative review. So um, Zach, do you, or, did anybody else have any other questions? I was just gonna, yeah, go ahead, Kim. Sure. So Zach, um, I had a quick question. I think I mentioned when you talked to our group that, you know, I'm with a nonprofit and I'm working with a special population where, you know, some people may um, not want their information shared because maybe they're still employed. They haven't told their employer they have Parkinson's or, or whatnot. I'm not sure if I can share my email list is what I'm coming um, to. But what I'm wondering is, is there a way to work with you where you can go other avenues and ask for their reviews such as through our Facebook page, through our website, through our newsletter um, and just ask them outright, hey, will you review us? Here's our link. We really appreciate your review. It will help more people learn about what we're doing. Is that an opportunity um, if they, if I have that barrier of not being able to share my contact list? Yeah, so our, um, so our system, you know, there's kind of two parts to the getting reviews. Part one is we do the sending. You give us your list that we send it and send those emails and the texting. We just kind of take care of that. Well, the second part is the auto detect that feature. When you click that link and that button I showed, then it took you and tried to figure it out. That's just a link in a web page. So we have uh, we work with HomeSense Heating and Cooling here in Indianapolis. They're in the Broad Ripple area. Um, they put they do our normal process. But to your question, Kim, they also put that link in every one of their invoices. They put it in all of their newsletters. They put it everywhere, you know, because they're like, hey, why not? <laughs> you know, put that link, and then it still does the auto detect and either takes people to Google or you know it doesn't have to be Google. I know we talked about Google a lot today because for a lot of businesses that is number one, but you know, we have businesses we work with that we take them to indeed because they're trying to build, like get employee testimonials. As strange as that sounds, they're trying to get people to want to work there. <laughs> um, so you can drive reviews anywhere. You can drive reviews back to your website, you know, wherever you want. It doesn't have to be Google. Uh, I understand the sensitivity. Healthcare is challenging because of that market. Um, but the answer is yes. You know, you can take that link and kind of use it. You don't have to do the sending. Okay. Thank you. I have a question. I've been listening to this while I was driving, so I couldn't take notes, um, I, but I am signing up because this has been a struggle for me for the past year and a half. Um, is there an onboarding that will explain everything that you went through uh, just now? Um, yeah, we've got a, two things. We've got a recording that you know kind of walks through the, the pitch if you wanted, and you could look at just the part that walk through the system, but in our welcome email, it has a quick four minute video that just gives you a walk through the platform and what your next step is. I guess that would be the question. Um, I'm sorry, Janice, did you want to any, anything else? I'm sorry, kind of jumped okay. on top of it. Did you have a question? <laughs> no. Well, I was just thinking that we had a couple of people who jumped on late. Um, do, do, uh, Zach, you do, certainly want to present to other groups because this is a new thing. So if anybody has other business groups, definitely. But also the some of the statistics and things that you went through at the beginning, I yep. think they're so, you know, so important to kind of understand. And I, the people that are on here, I think most of you guys probably already know or you wouldn't be here, but um, can somebody just reach out to you through the website and email and say, hey, Zach, I just want to check with you and see, you know, if it's worth, is that good? Is that a good yeah, way? They, to they can. The other thing I would propose, Jennifer, is we're recording this webinar, right? right? So right. let's make sure that that's available to the whole network if it they will want to be. understand the, the pitch. Um, but yeah, we can, I mean, we've got a, a Calendly link on our website. Anybody can schedule a call with us and, uh, you know, schedule kind of a one-on-one -on -one session to go through it. So happy to, happy to have those conversations. But yeah, I think this recording can be helpful uh, as well for people. Yeah, I will. Uh, I will send it out to you guys, everybody that's on here, um, and everybody that signed up and didn't show up. 
Um, but uh, yeah, so I would definitely go to five. And I keep telling everybody, but it's five star business. So it's the number five star business.com is the website. And it's really exciting to go to that website because I'm like, ah, thank you. I don't think about that. I just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love my yeah. hands. So. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Jennifer, we're, we're doing, a, yes, we're doing a promotion kind of company wide that's not near as good of a deal as what I'm offering you guys, <laughs> Thank uh, you. but we're doing kind of a Labor Day deal right now. So let's just do this for anybody in the network, whether they attended the call or not, let's just say, hey, now through Labor Day, we'll give, you know, this deal. Let's not put this deal on like social. I won't put it, <laughs> nobody in, put in it email, on social. It's fine. Um, so yeah, if you can help me, you know, promote it or get the word out to the group, um, our, our biggest battle is getting in front of the right people. I mean, we've got a message that we believe in and we know it's a pain point for a lot of people. The challenge is just getting them to take 15 minutes to pay attention to it. So, so yeah, uh, if you can help with that. That'd be awesome. So the deal, the offer, the, the great thing that you offered us is what you're saying would be through Labor Day. Yeah. Let's just do it now through Labor Day. And then that'll, you know, this link will change then anyway. So um, yeah, just, and then that gives some people some urgency on your end too, you know, uh, frankly to, to say, Hey, let's do this now and let's give it a shot. So we do have some people here that are with some, you know, fairly good size companies and stuff. So I hope that you guys will uh, reach out if you have any questions. Um, I think we just lost somebody. Maybe we didn't. It, it distorted. Yes. Deborah, what, what do you want? Deborah? Oh, we everybody saying, who's Deborah? Oh, she signed up three times. I'm joking. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm Deborah. not very good to talk. <laughs> You're good. You're good. What question do you have? Um, so you had said that you helped out all different types of groups, like nonprofits and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I run a community and it's not a business per se. Um, but, you know, people give testimonials and stuff like that. So do you see, I mean, eventually, I mean, I, I will probably get it into like a business, but right now it's just a, you know, community. Do you see the, um, the, the, I guess, like me hopping in this arena right now? I would say for anyone where the person you're trying to attract, whether it's, uh, people to be involved, donors, whatever the situation is, uh, if testimonials help you build that case, then I would build them. I think the other the other question too is a, practically is a volume question. You know, if, if you're in a nonprofit or a you know community situation where you have like one new customer, one new person a month you're touching, and you're only asking one person a month, then you should just do that directly and just hound them until they do it. <laughs> you know, but if you have ten a month or more then, you know, it, it gets hard to do that, especially when you're actually running what you're running, you know, and you're, and you're involved with that. So I think it's a volume question, you know, to be transparent on that. Uh, but I think testimonials matter to everything. I mean, I have a family member going through the adoption process right now, choosing an adoption agency, and they were reading reviews. Like, how is this adoption agency? Do you, how quick can they place? How good are the, do they treat the kids? You know, all those things. Like, I think that that kind of stuff matters to people when they're looking for all kinds of organizations. So um, I would just weigh those things. Yeah, okay. great. Yeah, I like good. that. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, thank you, Zach, very much. I'm going to, um, I always try to do this. Thank you, everybody. We have all kinds of different people and different places represented. So thank you so much. And I will send out the recording. And Zach, thank you, thank you. I will uh, send you the, the recording as well, obviously. And we'll uh, hope that this, you know, turns into some great leads for every, for you. And then that turns into big business for us, right? That's our goal. So thank awesome. you very much, yeah, everybody. You. Have a great day. Nice to meet you, thank you. Thank Appreciate you for being here, guys. Thank you, bye-bye.